Hi, welcome to part one of Blitz 3D for Beginners. Uh, I've already covered a simple 2D series uh, on programming games in Blitz. Uh, that worked in Blitz 3D and Blitz Plus. Uh, now we're going to start looking at the 3D engine in Blitz 3D. So that means this will only work in Blitz 3D and you will not be able to use these tutorials in Blitz Plus. So please don't go putting comments or mailing me asking me why it's not working in Blitz Plus. You'll just need to go out and buy Blitz 3D if you want to do 3D programming really. Uh, okay, first thing to do then is explain simply the differences between working in 3D and working in 2D. In 2D you have uh, X and Y coordinates, which is just how far across the screen or how far up and down the screen. In 3D you also have an extra coordinate, which is how far in and out of the screen uh, an, an object is. In fact, I shouldn't even say the screen, I should say what coordinates in the 3D space that you're working in uh, is the object, because everything in the scene is looked at through a camera, and the camera can be moved around. So you could change the coordinates of, a, of an object, but that wouldn't necessarily tie up with where it is on the screen, because it depends where the camera is when it's looking at it. So really with this, it's easy to think about how things are in real life rather than how things are on the screen. So if I just quickly show you this picture I just found online that explains it quite simply. Your x coordinate is just your left and right in space. Your y is your up and down, so they're just like the 2D. And you also have a z axis, which is in and out. That's the main differences. So if we write a program, it's just a very simple program in this, which is going to be a cube that is just spinning around on the screen in front of us. So first thing to do is set up a graphics mode. Use graphics 3D, which is a Blitz 3D command to set up a graphics mode and tell, tell Blitz to expect to render some 3D graphics onto the screen. Uh, this should work fine. Any PC should be able to do this. It used to be years ago that only some computers could do this. They had 3D cards, but really any computer nowadays can do this. I'm just using a cheap laptop, which you know has a less than impressive 3D card. That manages everything I throw at it, no problems, unless I'm going to go try and play Crisis or something like that. Um, so, yeah, any PC should be fine for these, for these tutorials. Uh, right, so we set up our 3D mode. The, our, the arguments for it, the parameters for it, are just the same as a normal graphics command, so our X and Y uh, resolution there, and bits, so 32 bit color, give us all the colors. And I put a two because I want I put a two there because I want it to be in the window. I then create a camera. Everything in three D has to be rendered from the point of view of a camera. So you create a camera using create camera command, and you assign that to an object name. Or in Blitz three D, every object is called an entity. So our entity is called camera, and that is a camera. We then create a cube. We call it cube. And we use create cube command or create cone. There's different create commands you can use. Uh, cone is just something I was playing with earlier. Uh, I'll switch that over at the end, end of this tutorial and show you the different objects you can make. Um, I do have something here about ambient lighting, but I'm going to take, out, take that out for now and explain that again in a minute, as well as this light here. So you can ignore them yellow commands for now. What we then do with it, we then move the camera, because all objects in Blitz 3D, when we create them, are created here which is um, at zero coordinates on all axes. So at the moment, our camera is here and our cube is there as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera back a bit along this z-axis uh, a number of points so that we're then looking back at the cube, which will be in the middle. So I move the entity camera. I don't move it on x, I don't move it on y, I move it on z. So the move entity uh, arguments is basically what the object is you're moving, x, y, and z, so how far on each. So we're moving it minus 5 on Z, which means we're moving it back, you know, out, out of the screen basically, back towards itself, so that you're then looking at the cube. I then start a while loop, so while not key down 1, so while we don't press escape, I want to turn the entity cube, so I want to rotate the cube, by these amounts, I think this is, these are in degrees, so that many degrees for each frame of animation, each time it goes through the loop. Um, so we're going to turn a 0.2 on X, 0.4 on Y, and 0.5 on Z. We're then going to render the world. Render world basically means it tells Blitz to draw a picture of what the 3D world looks like from the point of view of the cameras that you have set up in the, in the world. So we have one camera in this, so 
but it's just going to draw what that camera can see. We're then going to flip because it renders to the back buffer, so we're going to flip the back buffer to the front buffer so we can see it on the actual screen, and then end the loop. So if I run this program, see we just have a rotating cube there on the screen. And I come out of this, and I'm going to light it better because you've seen from there it's just a grey block. The reason there's a grey block when they're kind of shading is because it's what's called an ambient light. And this is light that kind of comes from everywhere. So if you imagine you have a room with lights on all the walls, all the roofs, all, and even the floor, nothing in that room would have a shadow. It would just have a plain sided look to it on all sides, and that's what we have here. So we're going to reduce the ambient lighting to zero. The reason there's three arguments is because you have red, green, and blue um, settings. So remember, you can click on a command, press F1, and the status bar at the bottom here will show you what the arguments are for that command. So I'm then going to create a light because if I run this now, it will just be black. There's no lighting anywhere. So if I can then create a light, you can create light. The light will be moved, will be created at zero again, remember, right in the middle. So we're going to move the light over on the x axis by 10 and not on y or z. So we're just going to move the light over this way a bit. So if I now run this, you see we now have a shaded cube because there's a proper light in the world, so it's getting shined on from a certain point of view, um, which means it looks a lot more realistic and has a much more 3D depth to it. Okay, I mentioned other shapes earlier. You can also create, say, create cone. I have a cone there spinning around instead. Uh, I can create a sphere. So. So I can spell sphere, right? Yep. Run that. It'll give me a sphere spinning around. You can sort of see the shading on the sphere. I'll move the camera a bit closer so I don't move the camera back as far. I'll be a lot closer when I can see the object so it's a bit clearer now. That's it for tutorial one. Uh, tutorial two, we'll look at loading an object in from a 3D package, as well as some basic te texturing. And um, we'll also look at moving the camera around uh, using the keyboard so you can start to walk around your 3D scene that you've started to create. Uh, these tutorials could go anywhere really. Um, I don't know what kind of game we're going to be looking at creating in 3D. I'll be taking votes on that around about the second or third tutorial, probably maybe the third or fourth actually, once we cover the bare basics of 3D. And then we'll look at starting an actual game project with which you'll be able to follow along online, just like we did with the Space Invaders project uh, on the 2D programming. Okay, see you in part two. Bye.